hazardous waste buried years ago around the island is now in focus of a project specifically carried out to locate pesticides and toxic chemicals in collaboration with DAF, the Environment Department and SPRIP. The hazardous waste has been a long-standing issue. A consultant from SPRIP, John O'Grady, was on the island last week to assist investigations into finding dumping sites. Samples have been taken to New Zealand where it is believed that toxic chemicals were dumped. We, we'll know a lot more when we get the results, with the results of the soil samples and we've taken some samples of some bores too. We're, we're getting the water samples analysed. Um, but uh, you can only really go by what people say and, and uh, the, the workers that did the job maybe 20 or 30 years ago or longer they say, oh, there's some, we know that we put some there, and you know, there's quite a lot, and we know we put some there and there, and um, I think we need to try and find them, really. And also, at the, I've taken samples from the, the landfill, Makato landfill, and uh, I understand there was some, a lot of dealdrin burned there uh, in the 60s, and uh, it caused a lot of smoke at the time, and um, when you burn dealdrin, you can get uh, quite hazardous uh, products resulting from that so but no one's quite sure where it was burned so and it was, might have all gone by now but I've taken some samples there we might find something there too so but also maybe lots of pesticides have been buried in the landfill over many years so who knows so I do think you've got a it's a reasonable problem and I think we, it's important to try and get a handle on it properly yeah, so, yeah. this project is a follow-on from the POPS project that was implemented some seven years ago under the Stockholm Convention for Urgent Action to Eliminate POPs. These chemicals can also seep into the water or groundwater, which is a concern. Chances are a lot of it's already gone, you know, it's been because it migrates through the soil and gets into the water and gets into the sea and um, it does break down naturally, so, but the POPs take a lot longer to break down. But uh, if it's got into the water supply, and there's no evidence it has, but if it has, um, then there could be health effects. Uh, but chances are it's such dilute amounts it mightn't be that serious, but any health effects need to be addressed, I reckon. And um, hopefully if we do find stuff, they can be removed before they cause further risk to the, to the people drinking from those bores. And, uh, I guess it's a precautionary measure, really. Uh, I don't think it's a, it's a huge risk but um, it does need to be dealt with. Yeah. It, some of it may migrate upwards it m might, uh, and some of them can be picked up in the, in the crops here yeah, but uh, um, I'd have to say we haven't found much yet. All we've heard is stories that, it, that this was buried here, this was buried there. But we haven't actually found much um, so based on hard facts so far there's, we don't really have a problem but um, I think you need to keep on looking just to make sure, really, especially with all the anecdotal evidence of stuff that's been buried. So, so that's what I'd certainly recommend in my report, that you you keep on looking, yes. Yeah, so. so who will be responsible? Is it DAF or environment? Uh, I, I, it's both, I suspect, because it would have been the agriculture people that would have buried it, and the environment are responsible for protecting the environment. Uh, and they've been amazingly helpful. They've been really, very supportive of this project and very helpful of me. And this week, I'm very grateful for their help. For their help. So, so, if there is a problem, I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of it. The hope is that sample being analysed in New Zealand will provide some answers and further investigate into other potential sites will be discovered. The delay in the demolition of derelict houses on the island has brought much frustration to one previous cabinet minister who worked ferociously to bring about the move to demolish the unwanted health risk. Honourable Olaf Jacobson, who is now new as High Commissioner to New Zealand, told Radio New Zealand International she could not understand why the new government continues to put off the demolition of about 80 houses on the island she described as I saw. As much as most people like to see the removal of the unwanted site, procedures need to establish the consent of landowners and building owners. With much anticipation of a speedy resolution in court, the matter has now been adjourned 
to submit before the new High Court sitting in March 2012. Part of the reason is that Crown has not concluded their process of contact with all law owners to ascertain the rightful owners of each property. However, that is much easier said than done, as most properties cannot be properly identified without a title. As well, contacting those who most likely own the properties has also been difficult without proper contacts. This afternoon, Minister of Health, Honourable John Williamu, said the government's stance on the matter has been to identify ways to resolve the standoff of the landowners to remove the derelict houses for the good of the nation and the people. She said the process will be drawn and it could take a very long time before a resolution is reached with property owners. She said even though the process will be lengthy, government will explore other avenues to progress with the demolition. Asked if Niue High Commissioner's comments on Radio New Zealand were contradictory to what government is trying to do, the minister said the correct procedures must be established to avoid future problems. The case of the demolition application submitted in the last sitting of the Niue High Court has been adjourned for another four to five months. New Tourism has called on the support of Frank Bunce to boost the island's profile as a tourist destination. Frank Bunce, who is well known for his career as a New Zealand All Black, is of New Wayne Heritage and has agreed to do several promotional initiatives on behalf of New Tourism. This was his second visit to the island that he says has been a different experience. It's been a different visit than my first time. My first time was... Um was to, you know, well, being my first time, come back and find out, you know, where I'm from, who my family is, all of that, the village, all of that. You know, so it was more emotional visit. visit. Um, and, you know, I had a good time. I had a great time back then, but it was for a different reason. And I didn't even do, the only place I went was Matapa the last time. But, uh, you know, this time has been a different focus. Obviously, you come back and you can catch up with people, but... I've, um, on behalf of the tourism department, you know, I've been going out from a tourist point of view, and, um, and going, you know, visiting as much as we could. Uh, so it's been a different focus, as I say, but um, had a had a great time, and talking to a lot of people. Um, everyone's of the same opinion. One week isn't enough, you know. They all, well, people, you know, it's always nice to go home, but people are saying it's nice to go home, but I don't really want to leave. You know, so um, that's been the, the general sort of opinion of everyone I've spoken to, mm-hmm. all the tourists around, and uh, you know, and, and people that you, you meet up with during the week. But um, it's been a wonderful experience, and you know, some beautiful, beautiful spots around here, um, and some great experiences to be had. So um, you know, I certainly go home and 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 you know, get the message out there. And has, um, you know, I've done some trade shows and things uh, in New Zealand with them and some radio competitions and some ads and things on, on radio. So I think my role is, is more of, um, you know, they, they make the plans and they come to me and say, we need you to go to this place, we need you to talk to this, these people. So I think my role will continue like that, which is part of the reason I had to come up here. If I'm, you know, down there talking to people about things, I'm, you know, I have to, have, I have to know what they are. You know, I'm, I'm telling people to go somewhere when I've never been there myself. And, you know, they ask me what it's like. And, I, you know, if I can't describe it to them, then, you know, it defeats the purpose. So I think my role will continue on in, in talking to as many people as I can, attending whatever the tourism uh, department um, asks me to, um, which is not a problem. Um, you know, so I'm very, very happy to do that. I'm not sure if I could... Well, in going back to Jane, who's been the... Uh, the writer that's been up here with me, she's writing, uh, she has to write four different stories for four different publications, different magazines and a newspaper. So, um, and she's had a great time as well. She doesn't want to go home. Um, but she said, you know, she's going to enjoy it again because she'll relive it all next week when she's writing all the stories. But, um, you know, she's planning on coming back. And, and I think through her, you know, New Air will get a, a really positive, um, will get really positive exposure from from certainly from this week. Hopefully this will bring Niue a bit more exposure. Frank also says that he hopes to return more often to the island with family in the future. 
my next visit, I'm not sure when, but certainly next year, I'm going to bring two of my sons up here because I think this will really, really benefit them. Um, you know, caving, going through the caves out in the bush, certainly out in the sea, you know, it's going to be so good for them and good to see where they come from as well. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just going to be general, I think. I'm, just, I'm going to plan definitely to come back at least once a year, but uh, not for one week this time, for a lot longer. Mr. Buns departed the island last week. Newest Yacht Club has been named 2011 Cruising Station of the Year by the Seven Seas Cruising Association. The association has 100 member stations with more than 10,000 members worldwide, deemed Niue a safe and enjoyable stop for cruisers. Niue Commodore Keith Ryle says it really comes down to the club providing the ongoing facilities and looking after the crews while they're here. He said Niue has have got quite a sophisticated website and one of the big pluses is that incoming crews and captains can email ahead to find out using single sideband radio to find out some of the information they need to know. Waypoints and GPS locations, all those things, which is almost a world first apparently. Keith Miles says later or last year, around 240 yachts called in with more than 600 crew. He says the visit are a key supplement to newest tourism drive. A dismal rugby performance at the IRB Gold Coast Sevens Tournament over the weekend had many on the islands calling for a replacement of the representative team and management. Newest continuing poor performance, not qualifying in Samoa for the Wellington Sevens League of the RB tournament, topped with a tragic loss in the Gold Coast competition, posed many questions from the public as to the impact of the representative side. However, some critics said this is typical of new fans to react negatively. If the team had won, there would be no comments. But if a team lose, there is always criticism. But they said Niwe Rugby should be brought back to the island to develop instead of the core team always selected from outside and that is the only way to improve. Three representatives from the island joined the main Sevens team last week in Auckland to compete in the prestigious tournament that saw a shocking defeat in all the games they participated in. The first game where Fiji saw Niwe lose 38 points to nil and it continued with the game against New Zealand, 38 points to nil, and to Kenya, 19 for Kenya and 7 for Niue. The first leg of the IRB series is topped by Fiji with 22 points, second New Zealand 19, and South Africa in third place with 17 points. Niue took last placing with Kenya, both earning one point each. The Niue Rugby Union has yet to comment on the performance of the team, but former All Black Frank Bunce, who was on the island last week, was able to catch some of the action and had this to say. You know, you know I'd, like, I'd like to, uh, to give back. I know Rick Tangilangi, and um, he coached me actually when I was, when I was playing at, uh, in Auckland. So I know him well, and you know, we, we speak often about, um, about how the team's going and, and things. And, and I think, you know, uh, and, you know, not to take away from what the guys are doing now but um, you know it's been a successful team for a long time it's been a good team for a long time it, but it's been the same team you know for a long time now and uh, it might be time to well you know certainly you, you gotta I know it's not easy and I'm not saying that uh, that Rick certainly he's not doing a, a good job but you know time rolls on and uh, you've got to start looking at some you know some more uh, youth some young talent and I'm you know I'm positive it's here so a um, little bit of development, I think. But uh, the talents here, the raw materials here, just takes a little bit of, um, little bit of work, a little bit of fine tuning, and you know, who knows. And staying with rugby, the 15-a-side rugby team that departed last Friday to compete in the Furu Cup in Papua New Guinea had their first game against Solomon Islands yesterday. Even though the game was close, Solomon won by just three points. Reports from the game suggested Niwe was the stronger team, 
but left their run too late for Solomon to win the match. 22-19. The next game is scheduled for tomorrow against Vanuatu. We wish the team all the best for tomorrow. And to end our news bulletin for tonight, Namukula Village held a mini market on Saturday with a surprise turnout of patrons looking to purchase food. It goes to show that residents are still keen to continue these Saturday show days as an activity for the family to participate together. One of the village elders said the comments made on Radio Sunshine Talkback last week for her village to join the larger village is wrong and small villages can match that of the larger villages. It's just the population number. But descendants of, that, of the smaller ones will always return to support any events hosted by them. That comment was supported by many on Saturday who also saw the effort made by Namukulu in producing some of the best food for people to buy. That's our news bulletin for this evening. Good night.